welcome to Meet the Candidate. My guest for this session is Carolyn Peterson, who is running for East Valley School Board, director position two. Welcome. Three. Uh, three. That's all right. Okay. Three. You know, most people don't pay much attention to those, those positions, but they do mean to make a lot of a difference to the candidate. They do. So I just want to start with getting acquainted with, tell me about where you grew up. All right. Well, I was an Air Force kid growing up. Um, but all of my major life events actually happened in Spokane. My dad was a B-52 pilot, mm -hmm. and so I was born at Fairchild. I lived here for about 18 months to two years, um, and then we moved around, and then my parents had fallen in love with Spokane, so I spent my, um, he retired, and I spent my last two years of high school here in Spokane. I went to Shadle and graduated in 97 from Shadle, and then um, I went to BYU, I uh, came home for a summer, met my husband, who was a Mead graduate, um, dated, fell in love. We went back to our separate schools. He went to Washington State. I went back to BYU. We met back up and got married 18 months later. So, Okay. And came back to settle in? The came back to settle in Spokane slightly. He um, joined the Air Force in undergrad, and we have been doing Air Force living for the last 14 years, and then he has finished his commitment, and then we moved back to Spokane um, in 2016 from North Dakota. So oh, my we not. have been uh, Grand Forks. Grand Forks. Okay. Grand Forks is the lesser known, but the better of the Air Force North Dakota bases. My uh, son-in-law and daughter retired out in, in uh, Minot. Okay. And they're still there. It's, it is an amazing place. We we're in South Dakota, and then we moved to North Dakota. Um, funny back to back, so we we joke that you join the Air Force, see the world one Dakota at a time. But both wonderful places, hidden gems. So they're great. Okay, so now you're back in East in the East now Valley we're back School here, District. Yes, back here. Well, in all that growing up and moving around, was there a first job experience that uh, that was really impactful to you? Um, I, you know, just kind of did my did my college jobs and I worked a lot of um, food service and things trying to work my way through college. Um, I ended up getting a job. I was a recreation management uh, youth leadership major and worked with um, rehabilitation of kids through outdoor activities and programs. And so I worked through the Orem Fitness Center. My um, after I graduated from college and kind of helped run the summer programs and I did a lot of volunteer work with the Boys and Girls Club and just kind of got into um, working with kids that way and kind of seeing, it was a little eye-opening and kind of seeing the different backgrounds that kids come from and then what they bring with them um, in their everyday life as far as, you know, the struggles they bring with them to school and, mm -hmm. and things like that from home. And so... Um, kind of got an idea of that. And then my husband graduated. He, I was a year ahead of him. And then we moved to Ohio for him to do grad school. And I actually worked at Basilius Tools, which is a plastic factory. Um, hmm. And I did some blue collar fa factory work, which I absolutely loved and got to meet a whole different group of people. And that was that was probably my most impactful job is just seeing kind of the trade, how trade school and the, the trade format works and just a huge appreciation for their knowledge as far as technology and machinery and what they can do with their skills. And so that might have probably been my most impactful job. That's, that's really interesting. Lots of people don't have that opportunity to really bridge that divide between the, uh, what we stereotype as blue collar and white collar uh -huh. jobs. Very cool. Um, any, you did a lot of travel. Any, we talked a little bit about the Dakotas. Is uh -huh. there some other places that you have a you have an anecdote you like to tell that has shaped your worldview? Um, Ohio, just more in that um, uh, we lived in Ohio and Washington D.C. and so those just very eastern eastern living as far as you know when we went out as a family when, as a kid growing up when we went out somewhere we had our we had our nice, almost business dress on. And then we moved from Washington, D.C. to California, and it was beach casual. And I remember that being a very big <laughs> culture shock for my, my parents and for us as kids, because we showed up, um, we moved to California from the D.C. area, and we all had our khaki pants on and tucked in and our belts. And the family next to us has like shorts and flip-flops, and we're 
<laughs> not glaring at our parents, but just kind of looking at them like, you made us dress up <laughs> for dinner. <laughs> so, but that was kind of, that was fun. That was just to kind of have those different experiences in just all the different places to live. Um, so just seeing, a, like, the United States is so big, and it has so many different cultures to offer, and to be able to take parts of all of those little cultures for a couple of years was, was cool. Yeah. So what drove you to or drew you into running for school board? That was, uh, I started, so we've got five kids. My oldest just graduated. He's 18. Um, my youngest is, just started second grade. He's seven. And so... I, between having my husband deployed and having babies, I wasn't super involved in school while my kids were all in elementary school. And then we started getting into junior high and we're still moving and I'm making excuses for not being involved because we're busy. And then we get to this port, point where we're settled and my husband's job is stable. Um, and the fact that he's in town and, and I just realized that I, I'm kind of missing out on these important moments of my kids school and that's just being an involved parent and so over the last four years when my husband when my son started high school i i really started making an effort to join booster club and to join pto and to kind of be involved in those parents meetings and the more i became involved the more i realized that with a we have kids in every every station of school we have a high schooler still mm -hmm. we have a junior high student we have two elementary kids now and it's kind of Every, every decision that my school district makes impacts my family very directly. It comes right home. They make a high school decision, it comes home. They make a junior high decision, it comes home. Elementary, it comes home. So I realized that I, I want to be a part of those decisions. I want to be a part of that development, selfishly for my kids, but then when I see how it impacts my, my friends' kids and how that in turn impacts our community and our neighborhoods and just falling in love with the East Valley community and wanting to help continue to make it stronger and better and more, more uh, homey, I guess. I don't want to say community driven, but more homey. We fell in love with East Valley because it felt comfortable. And I want to keep working with that. Okay. Well, that brings us to that last wrap-up question, which is uh, telling people directly, why should they vote for Carolyn Peterson for East Valley School District School Board? Well, I, I guess I kind of already... You covered that a little I bit. I kind of covered so. that a little bit. So um, I, I've, I'm in love with this school district. I'm in love with this community. I feel that the more that we're involved in it, the more that we take part in it, the stronger our neighborhoods become. Therefore, the stronger our schools become, the stronger our city becomes. And so being directly involved with that is just something I feel very strongly about. Um, I know Mr. Volker has a lot of experience. What I don't have in experience, I make up for an enthusiasm and just a willingness to be involved and participate. And um, I've got some different ideas. I've got some different perspectives from the different places and communities that we've lived in throughout this country, and so I feel that I have, um, I have a little bit more to bring to the table and a little bit, a little bit, uh, just, just something different, so. All right, all right, so thank you for coming in today. Absolutely, thanks for having me. Good luck, and I hope your enthusiasm carries you far. Thank you very much, I appreciate it. Okay. What does it mean to be awake? It means to truly understand the issues facing us and actively participate as a citizen in this country. One way you can do that is by voting your values based on the Word of God. We believe We Vote has done the research and provides you the information you need to make an informed decision on which candidates will champion our values and work for us. Now is the time to rise up, get involved, and vote. We believe we vote.com. Hello, Spokane. This is Governor Mike Huckabee. I'm going to be speaking at We Believe We Vote's October 2nd fundraiser. It's more important than ever for Christians to come together and to vote. I'm looking forward to seeing you on October the 2nd of this year. For tickets to the event, go to We Believe We Vote.com.